3 fishing boat video that I made several years ago. While the Seahawk 3 can carry two adults, the Seahawk 4 is a much bigger boat and it simply will be a lot more comfortable for two adults to be in this boat and do any, any fishing. Now, as the Seahawk 4 is also a much heavier boat, I did not concern myself too much about the all-up assembled weight of the Seahawk 4, you know, including the wooden insert, outboard motor, all that stuff. Uh, it's, simply, it's simply going to be too big for a single adult to carry this thing around. And I was able to maneuver the Seahawk 3 and get it up on the top of the car. That's not going to be possible with the Seahawk 4. So while it will still be possible for a single person to carry all the individual components down to the water's edge and assemble it and launch the boat, uh, to carry the whole boat anywhere would take two, pe two people, I would think. Conceptually, the boat will be exactly the same as the Seahawk 3. It will have uh, the same uh, outboard motor mount. In fact, I intended to reuse this whole, the whole seat console and steering console, uh, perhaps even the same outboard motor on the boat. In addition to all the features that are on the Seahawk 3, I plan to add a permanently mounted fish finder to the boat. This is a Hook 2 4X Bullet Fish Finder, a very inexpensive model. I think it's in keeping with the total all-up cost of the boat, which is to get you out fishing for as little money as possible. Fish finder is a great idea. And in addition to the fish finder, I would also like to add dual rod holders purchased uh, in a pack of two from Bass Pro. And these uh, rod holders would be the sort of thing you would have to hold your fishing rod while you're trolling, playing with your phone, whatever it is you're doing. So uh, don't have them on the Seahawk 3. I could really see a good use for them. So I will try to incorporate them. Okay, now to get started, you are going to want to build the plywood floor first. I use 7 16ths a Rocco ply. Uh, you could use something else. Um, 3 8 would probably still be acceptable. I use 3 8 on the Seahawk 3, and I just used uh, standard spruce sheeting. It's uh, very, very inexpensive stuff. But this Rocco ply stuff has a really, really nice uh, finished top surface to it that uh, if you're going to paint, paint the thing, and it's not a bad idea because it does get pretty dirty with you know, fishing activity. Uh, it's It would be nice to have a nice smooth painted surface there. So this Rock Apply is nice stuff. It was maybe a little more than twice the cost of the spruce sheathing. Okay, the next sketch you're seeing is a view of the Seahawk 4 deflated, make note of that, deflated upside down on the floor. So bottom side up with the wooden insert kind of sketched in there with the cross hatching. And due to the fact that the bottom will reduce in size as it inflates. And you can see from this uh, sketch I've also made the, the idea of why it reduces in size, just in case you need to know that. Um, but trust me, it happens. Uh, so I allowed about an inch and a half on each side from the inside seam. Now you will see two seams on there. One connects the floor to the middle chamber, and then you'll see another seam that connects the outside chamber to the middle chamber. So all these, all this uh, size on size at the top and the bottom are to the inside seam, and then the inch and a half on either side is from the inside seam as well. The next sketch I've got shown is a typical cross section of the entire perimeter of the boat floor. You will want to put a full radius uh, around the full perimeter of the floor as shown in the sketch there, and that is just in case you get um, a failure of your pipe wrap insulation, it comes away and you've got, you know, wood directly working against the vinyl and vibrations could possibly uh, cause some chafing uh, against the vinyl hull and you don't want that. So after you've, uh, you've got the, the entire boat, you know, radius like that, the entire boat floor radius, you will uh, drill a series of um, holes about the size, big enough for the, a tie wrap to pass through. So I'm going to guess that's probably around uh, 3 sixteenths and these both these holes are about every five inches or so uh, all the way around the perimeter of the, of the floor and you'll then take your pipe wrap insulation and wrap it around the uh, the floor as shown and insert your tie wraps around it tie them tight and pull them you know very very tight as tight as you can probably cam just by with your hand um, and then uh, and then just trim the tie wrap and you'll do that all the way around you may have to add another hole or two depending on where the uh, lengths of your pipe wrap insulation end up I used 
three full pieces of pipe wrap insulation. I can't recall what size they are. They're maybe around six feet long. And I had about another 18 inches or so that had to be filled in. And anyway, that did the job. Okay, now it's time to test fit your completed floor into your inflated boat. So with your boat sitting top side up, you will inflate the first chamber or the floor chamber full. Um, you don't want to make this so tight that you're you're in danger of hurting the boat or, or damaging the seams. And, and the other thing you have to take it into account is on a warm day, the boat will puff up a little bit more, inflate a little bit more, so you don't want to go too tight on that. So you've inflated the floor chamber, take your floor, place it in the boat, and now inflate the inner ring. Um, I did this with a shop vac. You take the shop vac hose and you plug it on the output side or the exhaust side of the uh, shop vac and it inflates very very quickly at that point. So just blow the thing up to full once again and once you've done this just take your floor and just tuck it in you know I mean pull on the boat side up uh, put your foot on the floor and just make sure it fits nice and not not so tight that you have to force anything and not so loose obviously that that the thing is in danger of coming out now if it is too loose obviously you have to do the whole thing over but let's hope you didn't get get that far so um you've now got your floor inflated you've got your inner ring inflated and uh it's now time to inflate the outer ring and the outer, outer ring you just once again inflate it normally and at this point it sh everything should look cool the the floor should be nice and snug and if you pick the boat up it will have a nice rigid feel to it it'll feel like it's all the floor is now part of the vinyl boat at that point and that's what you want okay the next view is a picture of the seahawk 3 insert including the steering uh seating console and i just sat the whole thing on top of the floor of the seahawk 4 to give you an idea of once again how much bigger the seahawk 4 will be than the seahawk 3 and to also give you a preview of approximately what the whole thing is going to look like once it's finished um, i even kind of like the sort of orientation of the seating steering console uh in the middle of the seahawk 4 there it seems to be about right in terms of uh space for the the forward passenger and the the rearward operator of the boat so everything will have to be just that little bit extra bit bigger in order to work for the in, in the Seahawk 4 but more or less the the details will be the same I, I, I intend to reuse the steering seating console uh, with a few modifications so that I can I can fit my fish finder in okay that's it for now I will be uploading a second video showing the completion of the Seahawk 4 modifications when I've got them done don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching.